What's up, everybody? It's Demo with Demo Vapes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, we are starting a video series called Coil Building 101. I, I mean, I guess I'll just call it that. <laughs> Coil Building 101. This is the beginner series. And we're going to go ahead and start out with what tools and such that I, that I like to use. All of these tools are things that I like to use. Um, you know, if you are a builder and watching this and you have other people, you know, or other, sorry, if you're a builder and you're watching this and you use other tools, that's cool too. This is just what works works for me. So I'm going to go ahead and run down the tools that I'm using with you guys. But first, I'm going to go ahead and give some chat shout outs real quick here. Let's see here. All right. We've got the Vapex, Eric Stocken. Welcome, guys. M16 Skills. Queer Your Vape, Cecile. Um, let's see here. Vapex. Um, cool, cool. Well, welcome, guys. I guess it's just you. Oh, wait. Okay, so we got Phil Lee, Miranda Jones, Frost Nova. What's up, guys, in chat? Cool. Welcome. I'm going to show you guys Ch Chessie Gloria's here. Let's see here. Um... Oh, wait, am I competing with Grim Green? Oh, no. I'm competing with the Grim Stream, aren't I? Shoot. What a bummer. I know a lot of people are uh, who are who watch me are Grim Green viewers as well. So I know that I just realized that I'm that I'm streaming alongside of Grim Green, which is a bummer. Well, I guess you're gonna have to choose. But, uh, you know, either way, you know, you can watch this uh, later on, you know, as a replay. So Today I have the uh, the Dreamer Mech here with the 21730T going on, and um, got the Redemption from um, from Apocalypse up top. Half Moon Mods Drip Tip inside. Inside it would be uh, Jungle Juice here. I've got Jungle Juice here, and uh, it's just delicious. Point one build going on inside some frame staples. Nothing too too fancy, I suppose. I'm, I'm getting to the point where frame staples now aren't really a fancy build. They're kind of more my like just the build I'll throw together if I don't have anything if I don't have the time to do an interlock or a fralian or something like that. So let's see here. I, I'm loving the redemption. The redemption is is just awesome. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. We've only got 20 people watching, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So uh, we, 0609. Thank you for being here. What's up, everybody? Okay, cool. Well, so we're gonna go ahead and start with wire right because wire is everything all every coil you're gonna make is made out of wire so everyone needs at least wire so i have several brands of wire that i recommend and then other brands of wire that i've heard are good um i obviously i've not i've not used every brand of wire that's out there so if you have a brand of wire that's your favorite and i don't say it you know, feel free to toss it down in chat if you uh, feel that it could be helpful to people. Maybe it's less expensive than the stuff that I recommend, but the stuff that I recommend has never, never led me astray. So, number one, my favorite company that makes wire of all time, Kidney Puncher. Now, Kidney Puncher tends to be on the a little bit pricey side, but Kidney Puncher is <coughs> all of their wire is super, super high quality and, um, you know, when in doubt, I always reach for kidney puncher. And this stuff is just really high quality, really nice. Their nichrome is nice and shiny. Um, their ribbon seems almost polished. Um, very, very, very nice wire. Um, again, this is definitely more on the expensive side. So, you know, check kidney puncher out. I will have links down in the description for all of this as soon as the video is over. And I promise that literally as soon as this is done, I'm just going to go right on and find links for pretty much everything that I talk about. So if you come back to this video in an, in an hour or so after I'm done, you'll have all the links. Um, I mean, probably sooner than that, but you'll have all the links down there. And if I forget something to shoot, just leave me a comment and I'll, I'll put it down there. So anyway, kidney puncher number one. Now for, for this is for a round wire, right? So normal, ordinary round wire, 
kidney puncher, right? I will tell you about ribbon wire, but uh, I, I'm not going to recommend that you start with anything with ribbon wire when you're a beginner because it just kind of is a pain. So kidney puncher. Um, the other company that I would recommend for wire would be Coil Society. Coil Society is a bit less expensive than Kidney Puncher, though it's not like in a totally different price category. It is just a little bit less expensive. Um, I recommend this stuff as well. And uh, I, one thing I really like about uh, Coil Society is they have bigger spools of ribbon. Kidney Puncher caps out at 100 foot spools for their ribbon. And I've got a 525 foot spool of ribbon from these guys and it lays flat, right? So. So anyway, but kidney uh, Quail Society, good stuff. Not, I wouldn't say quite as good as Kidney Puncher. It's, uh, you know, it's I would say just just one step down, but it's it performs just as well. I've not noticed any difference, but in terms of the overall finish and the shine and all that kind of stuff, if you're building for Instagram, you know, it'll be fine, I'm sure. But um, yeah, cool. So those are the two brands that I would recommend. Number one, two brands that I recommend. Now, of course, also. You've got Twisted Messes, which I think Twisted Messes wire is really good too. But Twisted Messes is in a category of expensive that's like beyond, way beyond Kidney Puncher. Twisted Messes is ridiculously expensive. And I have never personally found, you know, don't get me wrong, I like Kent a lot, but I've never personally found it worth it to buy his wire just because it's, I don't get a noticeable difference between this and Kidney Puncher. So Twisted Messes, it's good. You know, if you like Kent and you want to support him, go ahead and buy this stuff. And, uh, you know, that's just me, though. My opinions, obviously. So other wire companies that I've heard are, you know, good. A lot of people swear by KB Vapes, and that's just K-B-E-E -E Vapes. I should, I should stop for a second and let you guys know that all of the products that I recommend, wires, you know, tools, et cetera, et cetera, are available here in the United States. Um, if you're over in the United Kingdom or anywhere else, uh, what I recommend might not apply to you and you might need to go source your own, um, you know, for anybody, I, I, I see you M16 skills talking about some uh, UK companies. Um, you know, if you are a UK viewer, go ahead and put your favorite companies down there and just maybe help some of our other UK viewers out and European viewers. So um, KB Vapes is another good wire company that I've heard. Their wire is quite a bit cheaper than uh, Kidney Puncher as far as I know. Um, I wouldn't go with their ribbon though, but again, not going to start, not going to recommend ribbon, uh, you know, to, to newer builders. So yeah, stick, stick with the, you know, I would say, I would say stick with the two that I recommended. And then, you know, you can also do go with like lightning wire or lightning vapes. That stuff's okay. Um, I wouldn't personally recommend Temco. A lot of people use Temco wire and it's just super dirty. Um, you know, I'm just not, I'm just not a fan of Temco wire. So, so yeah, so I wouldn't recommend them, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's probably the lowdown on wire. There's not too much more in terms of brands anyway. So, so there's wire, right? We've done wire and in terms of brands now in terms of metals and materials that you're going to want, I would, I would, I would recommend starting out with Canthal. Um, just purely because it owns a little bit higher. So it's a little bit more difficult to end up with something that's incredibly, um, you know, incredibly, uh, oh, geez, did I miss Michael Diamantino? $20 in Super Chat. Jesus, I missed that totally. Sorry, guys. I was on a roll. Thank you very much, sir. Very much appreciated. Um, so anyway, uh, I would recommend Canthal to start with, even though I don't ever really use Canthal. Um, it just ohms a bit higher and you know, you're going to be, you'll have an easier time getting a little bit higher resistance and not ohming out too low. In the beginning, it's a lot harder to work with smaller wires and the, the lower the resistance of the wire that you go, typically the smaller wire you have to, uh, you know, use to achieve the same resistance. So what I mean by that is that if you if you have nichrome and canthal at the same gauge, nichrome is going to ohm lower, right? So therefore, if you want the same resistance, you're going to have to use smaller wires. Um, let's see here. Um, I got a question. Uh, Queer Vapes, Cecile says, Demo Vapes, have you tried Advanced Vape Supply? Yes. In fact, actually, I have a, a ton of spools of this stuff over here, Advanced Vape Supply. If you want 316L stainless, here's the thing about it, right? I still go to Kidney Puncher for, for that. Now, 
if you want to get pre-wrapped wire, like pre-wrapped Claptons and stuff like that, then this is not a bad option. But the I would not recommend this company just purely because their wire is expensive for how much you get. And the I would say Kidney Puncher is cheaper than this stuff for sure. Um, you know, and you can get just as good a 316L stainless from Kidney Puncher, if not, if not better. So So anyway, so we've got we've got that. So let's just talk about gauges to start out with, right? So when you're first starting out, you have to identify the way you want to vape first, right? Because it's it's tough to it's tough to know where to start, right? Um, I would say that if you are interested in just starting with round wire coils, 24 gauge Canthal might be a good way to go. And start out with you know we'll talk about we'll talk about builds in a different in a different video, but I would start out with 24 gauge Canthal for your for your round wire builds and stuff like that. Um, let's see here. So uh, yeah, anyway, I would I would start with that. Um, 24 gauge Nichrome would also be okay. Um, again, you're going to be ohming out lower, so you know consider that for sure. So, and I would not recommend stainless steel to start out with just purely because it's a little bit more fragile and easier to break and a bit harder to work with. Um, well, not harder to work with from the sense that it's like harder to make wires out of it, but it's, it's a little bit more finicky, I suppose, is, is what, uh, is what I mean. So anyway, so I would start out with that. If you're going to start out with making Clapton's or fused Clapton's, I would recommend picking up 26 gauge in either, I'd recommend picking up 26 gauge Canthal and 36 gauge. Now 36 gauge, when you go that high, I'd go ahead and recommend, you know, pretty much anything over 30 gauge, probably switch to Nichrome just cause you're gonna get a better flavor and it'll ramp up faster. So anyway, I wish I was able to give you guys some more graphic representations of this. I'm kind of just rattling this stuff off for you guys. So, you know, if you miss stuff, you know, feel free to backtrack and go back. Um, I might try to see, I might try to put some timestamps down in the description so that you guys can kind of, you know, see where you're, where this is going. So anyway, so I would say that for that, you know, go ahead and start out with 24 gauge. If you're doing round wire, 26 gauge and 36 gauge. Um, for, you know, Clapton's and Fuse Clapton's. So Nick said, don't forget to, sw don't forget to switch to live chat. Oh, sh yep. I got to do that. There we go. Cool. All right. Now I'm in live chat. What's up daily vape TV. Got another builder in the house here. He just did a, so daily vape TV just did a video series, uh, on coil building 101 or, you know, kind of the coil school, uh, vaping school 101, I think is what he called it. And uh, so, you know, go to, if you want some, if you want to watch some pre-recorded stuff, go check out Daily Vape TV's videos on all of this as well. So, all right, so that's kind of where we're at with wire. You know, I'm going to kind of move on. And if you guys have any questions, I'm going to I'm going to try to keep this rolling so that people can uh, people can kind of rewatch this and maybe not have it be a thousand hours long. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So let me uh, let me go ahead and we're going to start talking about tools here. So let's see. Where should I start? I guess we'll start with wire cutters and go into pliers and stuff like that. For for wire cutters, there are two brands of wire cutters I'd recommend, and one of them is not up here right now. But I will have the second brand in the description. So. Anywho, so for wire cutters, I would highly recommend Nipex wire cutters. They are, this is the, the brand here, Nipex. These are what MTurk uses. These are what I use because these things are insane. These things put a, a, a gash in my 502 RDA. Like I was cutting the wire and I caught the lip of the O-ring thing and I went to squeeze it down and I was like, man, my wire's not cutting, what the heck? I turn it around and I found this huge little nick in the five in the metal of the 502 that my cutters had just been like crimping into that, right? Insane. And they're still sharp. No, no problems since that incident. It didn't take the edge off or anything. So Nipex wire cutters, they're made in Germany. The only downside to these are they're expensive, right? So these probably run, I want to say 20 to $30 on amazon.com. But in terms of like, price for quality, you are going to get a whole lot of bang for your buck, right? Now, 
one thing I would say to go ahead and to go ahead and pick up, right? Let me backtrack a little bit. I stupid because I didn't bring it up here, but go ahead and pick up the Coilmaster V3. Um, go ahead and pick up the Coilmaster V3 kit. Let me uh, let me get let me pull it up here so that way I can screen share it. The Coilmaster V3 kit will have pretty much everything you need to get started for the most part, um, and it's not super expensive, right? See your coil. None of the tools are super high quality, but they are all in there. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and screen share this to you guys so you can see what I'm what I've got going on. All right, so this is the Coilmaster V3 kit from Coilmaster. Um, and it has everything you need, pliers, cutters, um, sharp tweezers, ceramic tweezers, a couple screwdrivers, you know, all your jigs and an ohm reader, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's got all the stuff that you need. And, you know, I, it's, a really good, it's a really great place to start. So, so anyway, that's where I would start out. Um, beyond that... As I said before, now my camera's all screwy. Let's see here. Hold on. There we go. It's a little bit better. Okay. Cool. So anyway, so Nipex wire cutters are a big upgrade, right? So I guess I'll talk about the upgrades. The better these are the tools that I recommend because I truly believe that tools make a huge difference in how good you your coils come out, right? The better the tools you have, the easier time you're gonna have working with your wire. So anyway, these are Beadalon pliers. These are bead making pliers. And I think you'll find that a lot of the bead making supplies are really also great for coil building. What I like about these is they are toothless, right? They have no teeth at all and they crimp flat, right? So these are really great for holding on to wires um, when you're, you know, straightening them in a drill or any other things you need, you know, when you're making 90 degree bends and stuff like that, these are fantastic. Um, yeah, so go ahead and pick, pick, these are, these are not expensive, right? These beetle on pliers, I think for like two bucks on Amazon or three bucks. So check these out for sure. The next thing that I recommend that you don't really have to get if you're going to get a set of these um, but the other thing that I would recommend would be these nylon tip pliers. If you're making more complicated coils, Clapton's, Fuse Clapton's, frame staples, stuff like that down the line anyway, these are kind of what you'll you'll want because they won't damage the wrap wire, right? They're, they're made of nylon and they have sort of soft nylon teeth, right? So they grip really well and they don't damage your wire. But again, this this is not really necessary right away at the beginning because you know you're not going to be using coils that necessarily get damaged i guess by tools so um let's see here one thing that i like a lot is i really like these these scissors these are metal shears and these are titanium metal shears i got these on amazon for i think literally three dollars these are fantastic if you want to make clean cuts on your on your wires. So at the end of when you know when you're cutting for your leads, sometimes the wire cutters will mash and you'll have to sort of, you know, not the Nipex ones, but a lot of wire cutters will kind of mash them and uh, mashing it. Um, <laughs> these make really clean cuts. They just make really nice like shik, kind of clean cuts. So they are very, very inexpensive and they work really well for a lot of other things, but so I always keep these on my desk. Um, okay, so other than that, let's see, where did my screwdriver go? You're gonna want a set of, I highly recommend these for wrapping coils around. So the V3 kit, the Coil Master kit has a set of, set of screwdrivers and a set of um, coil jigs in there, right? And you can totally, you can totally use those. However, I prefer immensely these little micro screwdrivers to wrap my coils around because I just find that I have a much easier time, you know, kind of getting in there and locking in my hand. And it's just a, it's just a better platform because the shoulder isn't as high, right? So it makes it easier to pull your wire up against that edge and uh, wrap around. So 
yeah, so I really like these. I got these. This is my really old set. Tecton screwdriver set or something like that. I got these a long time ago, but um, you can find these pretty much anywhere. Um, you know, just make sure you get ones with flat heads that tell you what kind of millimeter they are, right? So this is the three millimeter. There's two and a half, two, one and a half, three, three, three point eight millimeter, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I just prefer these, right? So if you find that you're having a tough time with the jig in the Coil Master Kit, these are a good option for sure. So now, okay, so that kind of brings us to the real question. Should you as a beginner start, you know, should you get a drill for things like Clapton's and Fuse Clapton's? Um, I would say the answer is yes, because I don't, I genuinely don't believe that Fuse Clapton's are beyond the skill of most people. I would say that if you have decent enough eyesight and you don't have any physical ailments, you know, with your hands or your, your fingers or anything like that, you should be able to, you should be able to make Fuse Clapton's or at least be able to make that, that attempt, right? I, I started off with round wire and then I jumped right to Fuse Clapton's. And for me, it wasn't a huge, wasn't a huge difficulty. Now I know everyone's going to be different, right? Some people are going to have really struggle with Fuse Clapton's and such, but, um, you know, that's, I, th I, th I think that it's a reasonable jump. So when you're looking for a drill, you know, and you're looking to get in this, you know, if you already have a drill, go ahead and use a drill that you already have, right? So, but if you are looking for a new drill, I would definitely say DeWalt is like kind of my number one. They are expensive. Um, Makita is also a really good choice and Makita is a little bit less expensive than DeWalt. Um, an impact, I would not recommend an impact drill for your first drill, even though they spin really fast. I would recommend a regular old drill, right? Just a regular old drill. This one spins at 1800 RPMs, which is a tad slow, but uh, you know, that's kind of the way it is. Removable battery. Corded drills, maybe avoid corded drills because they don't, they don't stop on a dime. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Other people are recommending Milwaukee. I see, a, I see a, a, a Nikita in there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Daedalus. Someone's talk. Okay, so let's talk about the Daedalus, right? Um, I actually have a Daedalus up here somewhere. I actually started with a Daedalus, right? And the Daedalus is actually pretty legit. If you really want to kind of get your feet wet in in coil building, but not really learn how to do it then you can you can do the Daedalus. The thing that I don't like about the Daedalus is that it's a crutch and ultimately doesn't teach you how to build, right? It, it, it can teach you prep work, right? You can do good prep work with the Daedalus, but I find that it's just, it ultimately won't, you know, when you, if you decide to switch to a drill and swivels, you'll find that you're gonna, you know, struggle. And it, you might as well just kind of struggle in the beginning and just keep at it, right? Because I, it took me two tries to make my first Fuse Clapton's. Now, granted, they weren't great, but, you know, they were, they were fine, right? So I would, I would, I would say that, you know, if, if, for, if the Daedalus is really great, if you have the, an issue with your hands or your eyesight or something along those lines where you can't build, or it really something severely limits you because you don't have to do anything. It's just real hands off, right? Um, but I will tell you guys that I have successfully made a frame staple on a data list before. So it is a fairly versatile little tool. <clears throat> I'm getting a little parched. Um, all right. Let's take a little bit of a pause here real quick and see if I've got any questions in chat. I also need to kind of think of where I'm going next. Let's see here. All right, so Brittany says, what's the optimal RPM for a drill for coil building? Um, it depends on, so there's no such thing as, 
well, let me, let me, let me rephrase this, right? The, too slow basically will just mean that you'll take forever, right? Too fast, on the other hand, will mean that it might become difficult to control. So for drills, I prefer a two-speed system, right? So I like, oh, no, that's my impact drill. Um, for drills, I like a, a system that has this, this multi-speed because you can get it where it spins at, you know, two different uh, speeds, essentially. So that allows you to have more control over over your coil. When you're making uh, very, very complicated coils, I'll switch this over to the slow speed, and that gives my trigger much more motion, right? So I can I can make much, much finer adjustments to speed. Um, I, would, I would shoot for anything that's 1,800 and above, right, when you're first starting out. Um, someone said an impact drill is too powerful. Um, I have an impact drill and this thing spins at 3,200 RPM, right? This is incredibly fast. And the only things that I use this for are, um, uh, fused Claptons and for decors for aliens, right? So I wouldn't even recommend starting out with this cause these are a pain in the ass. Um, and they, they, they wobble and stuff. So it's, it's not the greatest tool, but it does to get the job done quickly. So, <sighs> Anyway, vaping miner, new name, Stephen Romine here. Oh, what's up? What's up, Stephen? Um, so anyway, so that's that's kind of. Let me just look and make sure. Oh, right. Okay, swivels. So you know, just 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 a real quick, guys. You know, the, these tools that I'm recommending to you guys might kind of move into the intermediate level, but. It, I, I've had a lot of questions from people who have never never coil built and are like, well, I want to start with fused Claptons. And I'm like, well, okay, like that's, I would consider a fuse clapped in a beginner build, right? So we're, you know, we're here with the beginner builds, right? I, I believe that a beginner can pull off a fuse clapped in, absolutely. So that's why I'm recommending some of the more complicated tools and procedures um, to you guys, just because they will make your life so much easier. Um, all right, let me see here. In this box, got a bunch of equipment here. For swivels, I recommend one brand of swivels and one brand alone, and that is because I think that these are the best by far. These are Bill Fisher Croc swivels. These are the 330-pound test swivels, and they have a dual ball bearing in them, so they've got a bearing on one side, bearing on another. I find that I use one of these. I don't need, I don't need any more than one, right? It doesn't, it doesn't bind on me. And I've got it attached to like a skateboard bearing kind of thing over here. So if it were to bind, you know, it'll have a backup. You could you could put two of these together, but the only downside of these are is that they're about ten dollars for two of them. However, they last basically forever. I don't, well, I don't want to say forever, but they last. I'm going on six months on my first one of these, and it shows no signs of stopping. So. To me, that's pretty good. You know, if you buy a multi-pack of these kind of things for, you know, five bucks or something like that, you might be going through them, you know, once a month, right? Maybe even faster, depending on how much you build. So the most important thing, though, is regardless of what brand of swivels you get, the most important thing is that you get ball-bearing swivels. You do not want barrel swivels. You want ball-bearing swivels. If you get barrel swivels, good luck. You're not, you're not going to be able to do it. So... Um, the function that swivels hold is basically you've got one wire in one end of the drill, a swivel on the other end, you attach the wire at both ends. That way when you spin, the wire will spin together, right? And you're able to stabilize your wire. Uh, I don't recommend that anybody start freehand at all because you can just stick a wire in a drill and freehand your way on down, but I do not recommend that anybody do does that at all. So let's see here. Let me just uh, kind of see what we got. User abuser says, coil building tutorial, and he hits a pod. Well, excuse me. All right, let me see if there's anything that I forgot. Um, I would highly recommend that you pick up a vice. Um, this little guy is not, a, it's not the greatest vice. It's very, very cheap, but you can get this on Amazon for man, I don't know, maybe $10 or so. I per, I really like to have a vice because I find that in certain situations, this really will come in handy, right? I, I wrap my coils with a vice. So I'll stick one end of the wire in there and then use my bit 
while I wrap around the coil, right? A lot of people will just use their fingers, wrap around a bit. That's totally fine too. I prefer the vise because I feel I can get tighter wraps and a little bit more precision with it. But, you know, to each their own, right? I recommend it. You don't have to do it, but it's a good it's a good it's a good thing to have. So, um beyond that, those are kind of the basic tools that you really need. Um Beyond that, anything anything more is really kind of not necessary, but is nice. I've got these really big Klein Tools wire cutters. These are for really thick wires, like 20 gauge or 18 gauge, or really really thick frame staples or stuff like that. Um, you know, just purely because they're so beefy and they just make a really nice clean cut. Um, so yeah, I would say that you know that's kind of it as far as I'm concerned in terms of like your basic tools. Um, let's see here. As far as cotton goes, if you want my opinion on cotton, just Japanese organic cotton. I don't, I don't, I don't really use anything else. I've never found the necessity to use anything else. I've tried uh, every, no, I don't want to say every cotton, but I've tried a lot of cotton, right? And I've tried cotton blind where I don't know which is in what, uh, you know, which cotton, is you know which i'll do multiple atomizers and you know i've had other people wick them for me so then i can just try them S identical builds identical atomizers you know stuff like that and i can't tell a difference between most cottons in fact i've noticed that some cottons perform a lot worse than japanese organic cotton so i just use kogendo right kogendo or muji um I get it on Amazon. You get like 90 sheets for 10 bucks. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's 90 sheets should last you, you know, it, it, a, a package lasts me almost five months. Maybe, 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 maybe a little less, maybe we're like four months, but still a, a package lasts me about four months and I rewick all the time. Right. So, you know, I, I don't put much stock into the fancy cottons just purely because I think a lot of it's just marketing bullshit um, to, to sell expensive cotton, right? I have Kendo up there. I used to use Kendo. It's terrible. It's awful. The fibers are super, super short. doesn't wick very well, um, you know, to me. Look, if you guys use, if you guys use, you know, fancy cotton and you really enjoy it, you know, I'll go, go for it, right? You know, like, but I've, I've tried a bunch and I just, I just can't, cannot, Feel, I don't. I don't feel a, a necessity to buy anything other than Japanese organic. So, um, Brittany, all of the links for everything that I'm talking about will be down in the description once I'm done with this video. Just, just give me you know 20, 30 minutes because I got to go through and get some links and whatnot. But uh, I would say 30 minutes to an hour after this video is done, you are, you know, gonna go just, just, just check it out. Right. Let's see here. Daily Babe TV says Kogendo is the best. Except for Native Wix, your sponsors, Fresh Build Friday. Hey, Fresh Build Friday. It's Fresh Build Friday. <laughs> um, anywho, so I think that's kind of about it, guys. Um, you know, let's 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 take some questions. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please please go ahead and drop them in, and I will I will do my best to answer as best I can. Rootin' tootin'. If you guys watch Nick Bassett, you'll know why that's funny. Rigori, Rigore Mortis asks... Do you recommend to use dominant hand for pulling the drill trigger or holding a spool of wire? I use my dominant hand on the drill, and I don't know why I do that, but it is just uh, it is just what it is, right? I, I use the dominant hand. I think it's just ultimately going to come down to preference, really, uh, whatever you feel most comfortable with. It doesn't matter in the long run. Um, one thing I will say, though, is that a lot of drills will run just a tiny bit faster in the clockwise motion as opposed to counterclockwise. Um, and when I say clockwise, oh, sorry. Yeah, when I say clockwise, I mean if you are holding the drill away from you, it'll be spinning clockwise versus counterclockwise. I, I, I noticed my DeWalt drill spins a tiny bit faster in clockwise, so that's why 
I use my right hand. I find that it's actually more important to have more control over the drill trigger than it is over the clapton because all you're doing with the, the spool when you're wrapping is just following along. You don't really need to worry too much. Now, once you start getting into aliens and stuff like that, when your your fingers are really involved with that wire, you know, again, it's totally your totally your choice. There's no uh, nothing that uh, nothing that I would tell you one way or the other. Okay, so to all you guys latecomers, I'm really sorry. I did just go through all the tools, but you know, I tried to speed through that as fast as possible. So you know, feel free to go back and rewatch it. Um, I will have links down in the description to everything that I talk about. Again, um, let's see here. Brittany says. Um, Boop, 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 boop. I saw her question. What wire? Um, oh, you want me to share how I clean my coils? Okay. So again, guys, this is this is a, a, a beginner thing, right? So, you know, some of these questions, I will tell you how I clean them, and it does go for round wire as well. But um, you, a lot of the stuff that I, you know, if I, yeah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Um, all right, let's see here. What wire material would you recommend for newbie builders? I would recommend Canthal for newbie builders, just purely because it's easier to work with. It ohms out a little bit higher, and it's also really, really, it lasts a long time, and it's, you know, kind of a strong wire. So if you were to lay into a hot spot a little too long, or if you were to kind of glow your coils hotter, then Canthal will be able to handle that. Um, Nichrome is a little bit more sensitive to temperature, and stainless steel is not what I'd recommend to start out with at all. Um, just purely because it's so you have to you have to fire it at such a gentle temperature to get it to you know stay good. So yeah, I would say I would say Canthal. Um, Demo Vapes, what's your go-to mech build? Um, my go-to mech build build is an N80 frame staple or N80 Fralians. Um, but that's another video. We're gonna when we get into the intermediate kind of category, we're gonna we'll uh, we'll we'll talk about that for sure. I don't want to I don't want to get into that too much here. Let's see here. Um, any pointers from me, from me starting on alien coils? Um, dude, alien coils are tough, man. Watch watch a bunch of tutorials. Um, Sherlock Holmes has some really great tutorials on aliens. Um, give his stuff a check out. Uh, beyond what you see on those kind of channels, it's just a matter of trying it. You got to start it, and you got to you got to mess up a bunch of times just because it, it's you got to learn what how how the how the feel is right. So anyway, that's a little bit more advanced though. Um, you're asking for demo advice for new new vape vape reviewers. Just do it. Get behind a camera. Just do it. Like don't just just stop. Stop waiting and do it, right? Because like at the end of the day, if you sit and you you tweak your setup and you're like, okay, I'm gonna get camera lines and lights and stuff like that, you're never gonna get a video out. So, um, so yeah, just do it. Uh, okay, so cleaning coils. I use an ultrasonic cleaner with uh, hot water and a little bit of dish soap, and that works really really well. I would recommend an ultrasonic cleaner to anyone, just purely because they. They're really nice for just getting the skin oils off of your wires and, you know, little skin bits that you get on there as you're, you know, adjusting them and wrapping them and stuff. Um, it'll also make your wire color nicely if you're using Nichrome 80 or stainless Canthal colors as well. But, uh, you know, let's see here. Endivine has good tutorials. Yes, I would also recommend going and following Endivine on YouTube. He's got some good tutorials, although his stuff is pretty advanced in, in generally. In general... Um, let's see here. Am I going to be going doing advanced videos in the future? Well, yes, and I do advanced videos. I mean, what I would consider advanced videos a lot, actually. I do a lot of uh, coil builds uh, videos over on Instagram. So, you know, I, I do a lot of, when I'm building coils for myself or for other people, I tend to just live stream over on Instagram. So if you want to follow those kind of videos uh go check out demo underscore vapes on instagram uh that's that's where i do most of my streaming for for coil building it's just kind of the way it is i do stream sometimes here and sometimes in my facebook group but yes i will be doing an advanced video specifically in the future so let's see let's see here what else do we got 
And if I forget anything as far as tools or something like that, I will mention it in the in the description. Be like, I forgot this. You know, check it out. Um, next review coming up. Uh, probably five hundred two. I think the five hundred two is on 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 the deck. I'm 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 ready. I'm ready to review it. Um, well, let's see here. What are my thoughts on using copper? Uh, like copper mechs or what? All right, let's see here. Um, okay, so for aliens, you know, if you guys, you know, aliens, I would consider more of an intermediate build. Um, you know, I, I tend to classify things that a lot of people would consider advanced, like frame staples and aliens into the intermediate category, just purely because <clears throat> advanced builds are, or master level builds are things that are like hedgehogs and enigmas and pitchforks and, uh, you know, parabolic builds and all of these, you know, these builds that are way, 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 you know, beyond even, I, I can't do most of those, you know, it's, I'll, I'll admit it, you know, like <laughs> there's a lot of coil building stuff out there that I cannot do. All right. Titanium. User user is talking about titanium coils. I, uh, I would not recommend titanium for a new new builder at all. I would not recommend two wires. I would not recommend nickel or titanium purely because if you overheat those wires and they glow, you can end up with harmful oxides that if you breathe in are poisonous. Um, I don't recommend using them just because I think that in today's age, temp control is getting temp control is getting better, and I think stainless temp control is accurate enough. Um, so. Anyway, um, let's see here. Someone said something about, who was it that said something about copper? If you're talking about copper wire, then uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. That's uh, Michael Diamantino. You should do a coil beginner coil giveaway, please. Uh, you know what, Michael? I would if I wasn't so backed up on other things that I have to send out. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't do it on this one. I just uh, I don't want to keep promising things and not delivering, so I got to catch up on the stuff that I've already that I need to catch up on. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Sammy Nitro, I think all any new builder needs to take in all of Daily Vape TV's Fresh Build Friday videos. Um, yeah, go check out Daily Vape TV. If you, if you guys don't follow Nick Bissett, Daily Vape TV, go check his stuff out. Um, he's been doing lots of different builds for a very long time, much longer than I've even been vaping. So um, go check his stuff out. I'll put a link to his channel in the description as well. Um, he's got good good, good tutorials, especially good stuff for beginners um, and some intermediate stuff, I would say. Um, cool. Well, yeah. Um, I guess, you know what? We can move on to some more advanced questions because, you know, uh, I think that we've covered pretty much everything in terms of, you know, again, this video was was intended for the beginner, right? What should I buy? If I'm looking to start building coils and not just round wire, right? Then, you know, what, what do I buy, right? And that is, that is my intention for this. So, but uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Nick Bissett, Daily Vape TV. <laughs> I should bring Nick Bissett in here. He's, he's probably still working or something. So I think that uh, the next video that I do will be probably, um, I would say probably the starter video, right? Round wire and fused Claptons, I think is where I'll start. Daily Vape TV wants me to do the intro. Okay. What's up, vapors? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name's Nick, and it's Fresh Build Friday. Um, Daedalus. Yeah, you can, as I said, I said this earlier, but the Daedalus is is something you could use to start, but you won't learn anything from it. You, you know, you'll learn how to prep wire, right? And prepping wire is half the battle. But the Daedalus, when it comes to actually wrapping stuff, it's just, you're not going to, it's not going to teach you anything. Um, what builds do you recommend in the reload RDA reload RDA? Um, I, I tend to think that in that RDA that you need to not go so low 
I normally go around 0 0.1, 0 0.11, but it tends to get a little bit too hot on the top of fresh batteries um, for that RDA. I would recommend something in that like 0 0.13, 0 0.14 range, to be honest. Um, so you're gonna have to play with play with the builds. I, I I'll use anything from aliens to frame staples to fuse claptons. It's it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you like to vape. It'll take, and it'll make it taste delicious because it's bottom airflow. Um, let's see. Well, let's see if I missed any questions. I feel like I'm missing something that I'm that I use all the time. You know that like I'm not. <sighs> And I'm not showing you guys something that <laughs> that I use that's like critical to building, but I think it's just that I realized that I don't use as many tools as I thought I did. The Daedalus, okay, good question. What is a Daedalus, right? A Daedalus is, uh, I don't know if I have the jig part up here, let me search. Oh, I know a tool that I forgot, right? If you have bad eyesight or you wanna magnify your situation, get yourself some of these. These are magnified goggles. These are, you know, honestly, I don't even know what brand this is. I think it's just some cheap Chinese brand I got on Amazon. Um, but they have magnification. So let me see if I can, I don't know if I can do this with a hat. We'll find out. No, no, no hat. You gotta lose the hat. So these guys fit on here like this and then make me look crazy. Um, so that big eye there, wow. <laughs> um, so anyway, these are really great because you can put something kind of right here, you can lean into your wire and really see up close, you know, what you're doing. So these are really good for, especially when you're newer and you want to see everything line up and you're not, you don't trust your angle on the wire. You know, when you're claptoning, fuse claptoning. So, you know, again, if you guys are really any, if any of you guys are confused as to the terminology I'm using, keep watching the series as we go. Um, you know, and we'll, we'll, I'm going to be explaining, especially next episode, some of the basic types of builds and how they work. Demo the proctologist. Um, uh, let's see here. You need to move the camera closer and wear those in streams. <laughs> Definitely. Mad scientist goggles. Yeah, man, they're, they're really awesome. When I first started making frame staples, they were critical because I just, I just didn't trust. I didn't trust myself with the, I didn't trust myself with the, uh, the wrap wire, making sure that everything was lined up. Okay, let's see here. Just kind of looking through here. What about wicking techniques? Wicking techniques is going to be a different video, guys. Uh, there's a lot of the, all these questions. So you're giving me all ideas for videos. Thank you, I appreciate it. But I'm not. I can't. I can't deal with everything. Uh, wicked tight. That's that's what I'll say right now. Wicked tight. Always tight. Um, cores aligned, keeping my cores aligned and tight. Um, yeah, so I don't actually do a whole lot of that, you know, like it depends on the build, but you know, for my normal frame staples and stuff like that, I don't even, I don't even use a, use the sliders, honestly. Um, if you're talking about alien coils, I found that the biggest thing with alien coils is the prep. Everything's got to be so perfectly tight when you get that drill that you can't have any variation in the wires, right? Like if they, if they're spinning and one wire gets loose and then tight and then loose and stuff like that, it, you know, it's not going to work. Right. But as long as you have really nice and tight tension, everything is very straight. I found that up to about 28 gauge, I can do aliens without a slider. Um, it just takes practice though. Um, let's see here. Yeah. We can, we can, could be a whole other video. You're right. Yes. It definitely could be a whole other, whole other video. For sure. Builds to avoid as a noob. All right. Builds to avoid. Um, as far as builds to avoid, I would say anything more complicated than a fused Clapton at the beginning. Um, and okay, so I, this might not be the most popular opinion, but I genuinely believe that regular old single core Claptons are actually harder 
to make and install than fused claptons. And that is because the fused clapton, the dual wires that are wrapped, you know, by a smaller wire, right? That is um it's a lot more rigid of a of a wire, right? And so when you build intimate when you build uh, the the fuse clapton, everything lo locks in, right? As soon as you're done building a clapton, what happens is you snip that wire, and that clapton wrap that you just you know wrapped on the wire will go boom and, and spring off and get loose, right? And then when you when you go to wrap it, that that wire is sliding along the, the core, and it's just a pain in the ass. Um, fuse clapton's much easier from the standpoint of wrapping them and stuff. It might be an extra step. That you have to, you know, go. You have to do. You have to line up those two wires parallel and wrap them and stuff like that. But I never found that it was that difficult, and I'm sure other people might. But I think that it's a good place to start. Um, so yeah, I would stick with round wire fuse claptons right at the beginning when you uh, when you start. But uh, yeah, you know, once once you're done with fuse claptons, then. You know, you can either go one of two routes, right? From Fuse Claptons, you can then either go to like Frame Staples in that route, which is the route I took, um, or you can go with like Aliens and stuff like that, and you know, three core Fuse Claptons and that kind of stuff. Those those are a little bit tougher when it comes to technique, right? I prefer things that involve a lot of prep, but then the actual wrap technique is not that hard. So, yeah. Amith, go to brand of wire kidney puncher. Said that the, I said that in the beginning, but you probably weren't here for that kidney puncher. Um, yeah, I would say kidney puncher. Uh, kidney puncher coil society. Those are my two. Those are my two favorites. Um, if you want to know what I'm vaping on right now, this is a. Let's pull this cap off. This is the titanium uh, redemption with a silver plated deck, um, and this is a point one frame staple and i'll tell you the wires that are in this right so a framed staple if any of you guys are not familiar is a wire that is made up of two two frames or let me, let me back up it's a wire that's made up of a vertical stack of ribbon right so imagine imagine you're looking at the wire right so if i had the wire like like facing away from me you're looking at a vertical stack of ribbon with in this case eight pieces of ribbon and then on the outsides of that you've got two round wire frames right and then that whole thing is clapton so let's see frost nova i vaped weed with kidney puncher and now i have kidney stones <laughs> that's good i like that that's real good oh wait i probably can't mention that word anymore youtube is taking down channels that talk about uh that stuff so um sadly so anyway, so this is two pieces of 30 gauge nichrome with eight pieces of 0.3 by 0.1 ribbon in the center and all wrapped up in 42 gauge nichrome. This comes in at 0.1 ohms, which is a bit low for a single tube. However, um, this this is those new 30 T's and I'm they're pretty good, right? My, my mod gets barely warm, right? So anyway, when I press uh, this button, you get... A lot of vapor very quickly right nice fast ramp up time stuff like that I mean, now let me see if i can actually get this on without it I have some, i'm having some o-ring issues with this atomizer that silver plated deck i gotta kind of wiggle it down but yeah i mean it's just chucking the boobs So cool. Demo blew out his O ring. <laughs> um, for mech coils, I will say this, right? If we, if you want to talk about mech coils, um, the what I would say with mech coils is the goal, the name of the game is keep your mass low, right? You don't want your mass to be too high, and what I mean by that is you don't want like a seven or eight wrap, you know, of anything on there, right? You really like don't want to go much past like a six wrap of any specific coil. Um, now, I mean, if you're using round wire, you might be able to get away with bigger coils, but you know, if you're using fuse claptons, aliens, uh, frame staples, stuff like that, keep that inner diameter to three millimeters or less and keep the wraps to five or six or less, right? So 
you know, obviously making sure you're vaping safe, right? But um, let's see, how do I how do I build them? Well, you gotta keep you're gonna have to keep watching my videos, man. I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna there will be probably a whole video talking about coils for max versus regulated. Um, I have coils that I use for regulated. Uh, mods than I have coils that I use for max, right? So, and I have coils that I do for both, right? Anything that can vape, I, I don't, I rarely build anything that's under 0.1 ohms. So most all of the builds that I use can be run on regulated mods as well, but they might draw your batteries down. Um, so yeah, so you're, you know, we're talking about mass, you know, low mass, right? So you don't want huge, big, thick wires and these big old beefy coils that are going to take a long time. Oh, mesh coils oh 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 i thought you said mech coils okay well mesh coils uh you know like that's i'll leave those to sub ohm tanks you know i think that mesh works really well on sub ohm tanks but that's about it so um dire thing your uh, your idea that's keep yes daily vape tv mentioned that i should have said that earlier before you build anything, make sure you're using safe batteries and n understand your Ohm's law, right? I guess I didn't say that earlier because I was just talking about the actual tools. But yes, you must understand Ohm's law if you're, you know, if, you, if you're going to start building coils, regardless of whether you're on a mech or on a regulated, you must know Ohm's law. It's it's a it's a must. It's I, I can't. I've talked to so many people who are who build their own coils and don't have any idea, you know. Mike Vapes, what's up? Did you win the giveaway? <laughs> no, sorry, Mike. So yeah, that's uh, that's where I uh, that's where I you know that's my belief anyway on that. So let's see here. Um, yeah, so Dire Things says, uh, which th this is a good future video idea. Which ones and why when? Uh, I have right now one thing I'm working on right now is a pretty comprehensive tutorial or guide anyway on how to use math to figure out how a coil will change, right? When you've, depending on, let's see, depending on how you change the wires within the coils will change the way something, you know, it, it'll change the way that it vapes, right? So how do you calculate that, right? Like, it, it, a lot of beginner builders are like, well, where do I start? And then how do I change it? And like, you know, if I go from 28 gauge cores to 26 gauge cores, what will that really do? It'll, I know it'll lower the resistance, but how will it change and all this kind of stuff? There are other things at work, right? Uh, you know, ramp up time and, and ramp down time and mass and surface area and all of these things that are really something that is tough to, kind of tough to get at the beginning, right? Everybody will find their builds right and you know with math you don't have you, it's, i'm not talking about having to do complex equations right i'm talking about um things that um you know you can do really easily right stuff that you can uh, stats that you can enter in from the coil building website um and uh you know then then put them in your calculator right and you get you get numbers and what the, what those numbers mean and all that kind of stuff so i've i've got a whole video series planned out for that um, live streams, you know, debates, stuff like that. Cause I'm really genuinely wanting to, um, genuinely wanting to create something that will actually be useful. That's not just some, you know, scientific bullshit. So steam engine. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Steam engine. That's exactly it. If any of you guys don't know what steam engine is, let me go ahead and pull that up for you guys. Um, uh Oh, there we go. Steam engine. This is a fantastic website um, to go and check out. They have Ohm's Law calculators and coil wrapping. Uh, you know, the Wire Wizard I use all the time because Wire Wizard is something you can put in all the specs of your individual wire when you're doing really complex builds. And it spits out an, an, a, a, a resistance that's fairly close to what you are actually going to end up with. So... Um, User abuser Ohm's law is really simple. Just watch a few few videos. Yeah, it's just a really simple mental thing. Just understanding how it all works, right? Like what affects what. You don't even really understand. Need to understand the math, but you need to understand what to put in the calculators and why, right? 
So, you know, I, I might even do a full on, you know, I might do a, a pre-recorded video on that because I'd want to be able to put thin graphics up on the screen to show you guys. But, um, yeah, so Ohm's Law, definitely a must. And, uh, yeah, let's see here. Steam Engine. Yeah, dude, Steam Engine is awesome. It's it's fantastic. If uh, I, I, Once I found Steam Engine, I was like, ah, oh, you know. <laughs> I, I don't need to wonder anymore what everything's going to come out. So, I mean, Ohm's Law is relatively simple, right? If you're on a mech, you put 4.2 into the voltage, you put your resistance up in the uh, little resistance calculator area. Or the, so you'll put resistance, you'll put 4.2 for voltage, and then it'll spit out how many amps, right? If your amps are higher than what your battery is rated for, it's too low, right? And I know people who go lower, and I'm 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 running what you'd consider a danger build, right? This is this is a higher amp draw than this battery is rated for, but I am doing that fully aware of the risks, and you know it's it's really something that for well I, I'm going to stop right there, but yeah. So cool. Well, if you guys have any more questions, uh, you know, put them down. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I don't, uh, I don't want to keep this going too long. An hour is pretty much good. Um, you know, I'm hoping that people will re-watch re this if they want. You know, I tried to keep everything condensed in the beginning. So, you know, yeah, like if you want to be really safe, you can go up all the way up to your continuous discharge current, but, you know, uh, I'd be very careful with that. So, you know, it, understand this. If you are over your continuous discharge current rating, you could potentially have venting if your batteries, if your mod were to auto fire or something like that. Um, you know, explosions happen really, from what I understand anyway, explosions are more likely if you have a hard short. You know, if you are if you just overdraw your battery, you're just more likely to vent, I suppose. So, <clears throat> yeah. After party in the vapes do Discord. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, Tony, point, point one far from living on the edge. Well, you know, it, 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 I can't, I can't advise it. You know, I can't advise point one on a single tube, right? It's, uh, that's the lowest I would ever go on a single tube, right? Personally, I do, I'm not comfortable with anything that's like the 0 0.09, 0 0.08. Some people run these 0.05s on single tubes and I'm just like, you're drawing like 120 amps, you know, like that's insane. Like, don't, don't do that, you know? You know, there's there's like no mod that I'm aware of that can safely drive coils at 0.05, except for like the Sith V2, maybe. You know, the quad battery parallel. But uh, you know, that's that's me. Look, I mean, I, you do whatever you want, right? But I can't. I will not advocate unsafe builds on my YouTube. Hammer of God. There you go. Oh, hello. My camera's decided to go out of focus. There we go. Cool. What were they running at the show when the mechanical popped? Are you talking about ECC Ontario? Um, I don't know. I don't know what, what, what happened there. That, that was a situation that was completely unknown to me. Witness protection demo. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like this video if you haven't already. Um, I know we're over. We have 43 likes and 40 watching, um, but it really does help. I do appreciate that. Um, like, you know, leave some comments uh, if you, you know, if you missed the stream. Leave some comments below. I'll try to get back to you. And, uh, you know, if you're not a subscriber here, hit that subscribe button if you, if you enjoyed this. And, uh, yeah. Perfect. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Links to all of this stuff will be down in the description. I'm going to start working on that right now as soon as I'm done uh, done with this. Uh, keep in mind, any Amazon links will be affiliate links. Um, any money that I make from Amazon goes right back in the channel. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's just, I got to go ahead and disclaim that. But uh, yeah, cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Demo out. <laughs>